Everybody is still standing up with Craig Shoemaker. There is, isn't that a cool sign right there? There is a cool sign. Still standing up. There's a lot of significance to still standing up. We're going to find out in this episode how Dennis Haysbert is still standing up in pastels. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you, Craig. So that's the history. So therefore, almost like a DNA passed down, which Mm -hmm. is probably why we still have difficulties with the reaction. The reactions are... You know, sometimes. Well, uh, that and fear. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, we go into fear, and that's everything's based in fear. All people, mm-hmm. uh, all these reactions are all based in fear. Even, the, even the, if I'm dealing with my, my ex-wife or whatever it is, it's all, it's all fear. Yeah. By the way, I've never beat my kids. Neither did I. Really? No. Yeah. Isn't it amazing we stop that pattern? Yeah. It's a, and I, I never even think about it. No, because where do you go from there? Well, where do you go from there? And, and like, w- when you think about it, what is the lesson you're ter- you're learning? Where you're teaching a child? You're teaching a child. I have no control over myself, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let loose on you because I can't control myself because I'm now trying to control you, which will make me feel more in control. It doesn't. It doesn't do any good whatsoever. No. There's no lesson that's learned. You know, you think you're teaching them a lesson. This hurts me more than it hurts you, and all that. No, you're hurting everyone by while you're doing it. You're losing your temper. So right. rather than that, have them learn how to contain yourself, how to work on yourself, how to find grace, how to find goodness mm-hmm. in any situation, how mm-hmm. to find another way to communicate. That's all, that's all dominance. But that's why I was curious about your dad. I would imagine would be more dominant because he was a police officer. No, uh, I think uh, all, um, I can't say all. I'm saying most black parents, I think, what they do is to keep their child safe. So I remember uh, Peterson, remember the running back? Remember that story? Yeah. Uh, Adrian Peterson? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he probably learned that from his dad. That's what happened. And he thought this is normal behavior. Right. And people seeing it, I imagine, in the black community are going, yeah, that's what we do. And now you're going to take this guy out of the NFL because of that? That's what we do. Is is that pretty much what the take would be? I mean, you're thinking. Well, you know, it, it also has to do with, it has to do with how everything has changed. I mean, you know, cancellation, um, you know, vilification, you know, all this stuff. If if somebody wants to get you, they're going to get you. Oh, yeah. You know, and um, so you might as well, you know, stay, like I said, it's back to authenticity again. Stay authentic, yeah. learn. And I think what everybody needs to do, and I mean everyone, is get therapy. We all have trauma. What kind? Yeah, I agree. And and trauma responses are what kills us. I mean, that's literally kills us. These are trauma responses. People that don't have the skills or the tools, they were not taught that. Right. That's a lot of the show. This is what it's about. We're uh, turning these things around. How do you turn it around when you're in a situation you're about to let loose with rage or whatever it is? You're about to you know, come after somebody, That's those are those are trauma responses, yeah. those are fear responses. Educate yourself. I've learned Read. that uh, fear is false evidence appearing real, so what I do is I go, okay, oh, that was false. And by the way, it's like 9900% of the time it's true. It's uh, I built up something that was not true. Okay. There's I built false evidence. And by the way, speaking of black, what happens is, you, that's what you see on television, and people are programmed to think, oh, there's the criminal. That's what they look like, so therefore they go into fear, and they have fear responses because they don't know any better because that's the way they're conditioned. Right. That's what they see. They don't see the guy, the president of, of Enron, you know, being arrested and, <laughs> and jailed mm-hmm. or people that are even poisoning our food or whatever it is. You don't see that at all. These white-collar crimes, they don't cover them. But they lead with, that's what they lead with. So white people are programmed to think, oh, there's the criminal. That's what they look like. Yeah. You don't agree with me? No, I agree with you. I mean, I, like You I have said, a different <laughs> perspective because you're black. Well, I'm only 14%. <laughs> and I just found this out. <laughs> black people understand it. For me to, to speak to the white people in your, you know, in your audience... <clears throat> It, it it would go on deaf ears. What does that mean? It's a, to, so there's, well, a, gonna, wait, there's well, an well, assumption that they're they gonna, would, then they, all they, of a sudden in this one hour podcast gonna under, are gonna understand and 
believe that everything that they were taught is a lie. Well, that's interesting you should say that. How else can someone learn? Like, I just brought up something that's a fact, right? That's a fact mm-hmm. that there's more. So they, they, the news, by the way, the reason I don't watch the news is they choose your enemy. Yeah. They choose, um, I remember during the debates, they said, you say Islamic fundamentalist terrorists. You say, they, that, so that's what the news, they brought that to you. Mm-hmm. They said, no, this is your enemy. This, it's ISIS this week. It's somebody else. That's what well, they do. you know they what I'd like to say? Yeah. You know, cause before we start getting into names and everything else, it's chaos. Yeah. Yeah, of course. The world field, uh, feeds on chaos. That's why I don't watch the news. That's why I have this. Is This is an alternative to that. But it's also an alternative to give a different perspective. And you never know who it's going to land on. It could land on one person. Mm-hmm. How do you think th- some of these things landed on me? I grew up white even, um, uh, before I knew I was Ghana. <laughs> But nobody's looking at you saying, oh, man, he's got him. I get invited <clears> to the <throat> reunions now. It's awesome. It's <laughs> <laughs> the Ghanaian people. No, of course they don't. But yeah. I've had this thing inside of me my entire life where I just don't accept what they're selling me, including that. I would say, oh, I think there are much worse crimes than, you know, this guy held up a 7-Eleven or whatever. That's who they run across the news. And we're programmed. I would sit back and as a kid even. But that's what I'm trying to say is is offer a different perspective. And you don't know who it's going to land on. Well, you know, we can go into all kind of socioeconomic uh, disorders in this world. Oh, yeah. You know, that makes people do the things that they do. And um, I don't know. what motivated you to be an actor? Did it have anything to do with uh, with conditions? Was it have anything to do with the way you were brought up? You had like, uh, I think like three hundred brothers and sisters. What, what <laughs> how many? How many? Did, it was a total. I had uh, mm-hmm. I had six brothers and two sisters. It's a big family. Yeah, but that's about Catholicism. My my dad was Catholic. So did you know. have a station wagon? At once upon a time. Yeah, yeah. of course you did. And our, t- and so our my, bo- my dad liked these, you know, these boats, man. These, these, you know, like these uh, Electra Deuce and the Quarters and <laughs> things like that. <clears throat> he liked I, these big cars. Where I grew up, the Woody Wagon was the Catholic. That was the Catholic school. You knew yeah. those were Catholic school kids. You'd see the Woody Wagon loaded with kids, mm-hmm. limbs hanging out, facing backwards. <laughs> That's how you knew it was a Catholic school. Yeah. So did you go to Catholic school? No. Oh, okay. No, I was raised Baptist. Uh, my mother's Baptist, and my, my dad was Catholic. But he won out on the sex, and she won out on the religion <laughs> because you're not supposed. You're supposed. Essentially, to, you're not supposed to have uh, use protection. That's what the Catholic. Is there like some mandate? I I really don't understand. It well, you know, and Catholics, you know what that's about. You know, they want more Catholics in the world. Yeah, yeah. but do they literally have like a mandate? They say no, no, no protection. I mean, how did that happen? Because it is, a, it's it's a very common occurrence where I'm from. Is Catholics, big yeah. Irish Catholic families with no protection. So yeah, I guess that. So you had nine in your family. Yeah. That's a lot on a sheriff's wage. Although your mom worked as well. well my mom worked as well. Yeah. She was was a, there a lot of like older siblings raising kids, like that kind of thing? Was a the, a lot of responsibility of the older siblings? Well, eventually. Had? You know, you know my my elder brothers, you know, and uh, my sisters, you know, got family. It doesn't happen when they're six, but no. I'm a, I'm saying like uh, if well, I wasn't around when they were six. <laughs> so which number are you? I'm a I'm eighth. Eighth. I'm eight of nine. Were any out of the house when you were born? Yeah, they were already out. Yeah. So they're they're like a, an uncle to you, <laughs> like a sibling. No, well, <laughs> you know, my 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 father was uh, was uh, uh, pretty ingenious. You know, he bought he. He took, tore down the big house um, and built a house and built apartments in the back. And my, my, my elder brother, one of my brothers, you know, took the apartment back to the back. So when I saw them all the time. When you're getting in fights at school and they say your, your big brother's protecting you, you're bringing in a man. <laughs> you're bringing in a man. Oh, like, yeah. Let me go get the other kid's getting a 12 year old big brother. Well, here, here I, let me bring my. 29 year old big brother here to kick some ass. <laughs> I went there, but they weren't that much older. I mean, you know, let me see. Yeah, I mean, well, well, my eldest brother was 34 when he died, and uh, I was 22. Oh, okay. So that's what basically well, started wasn't my much career. difference. That, that you had some Irish twins going on there. You no. know what that is, right? No. You, know, you ever heard Irish twins? No. If you're born like. 
14 months apart that they're called Irish twins. Well, no, this is more like 14 years. Okay. <laughs> no, no, 14 years that one. I'm just saying you have, yeah. a, you have a sibling you're close with, right? It was born probably 15 months apart from you. Uh, yeah, I do. That's I have, an Irish I have twin. I that, that's, uh, that's actually you know, just a, a barely a year older than I am. So. so when did you decide acting um, is what I need to do? When I was 10. 10? Yeah. Did you play in a church play or? No, I just rem- I just knew the movies I liked were way above what I thought I should be watching. Because uh, in those days, um, if uh, the movie was out in the theater and it, once it had its theater run, they put it on television. I was I grew up in a time when there was only you know four channels. Yeah, of course. Yeah. ABC, CBS, NBC, and PBS. Oh, then those those uh, B V channels, the UHF. Did you have that? The other knob. Oh yeah. Where you just surround the channel like a safe cracker. <laughs> <laughs> and move the ears 17, around. 29. Oh, yeah. I had to become the rest of the antenna. Oh, yeah. For better reception, you had to twist like a Picasso. In, in my house, I was the remote. <laughs> exactly. Get, father, up. Get, get up, up Dennis. Turn the channel for The youngest one in the family. That's your remote. Yes. Yeah. So, so you, what were your favorite movies? I try to get my kids to watch old classics. It's a joke. Well, I mean, They, they what, won't what, do it. They'll what, throw me old, one once in a while. Your old classics are not their old classics. I I literally last night I had that thought. I thought no because they have no, no CGI. There's nothing advanced to these movies. Right. They're very basic. I've tried to get them war movies. They have no interest in a war movie. I loved war movies growing up. Yeah, well that's what was on. You know, I I, I love. That's what they made. Now yeah. they make Marvel movies. We had war movies. Right. Yeah. Right. And what's your favorite? The Young Lions. Oh wow! Is that Peter O'Toole? No, the Young Lions was uh, uh, Brando. Uh, oh. I think it's E. Mary Saint. And, and my kids, um, gonna, my kids gonna like Max this. Max von Sydow. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Young uh, Lions of all of those old films, that's the one you would like. You would watch a number of times man, and inspire you. Dial that up and look I at the cast. I am going to look at the cast of that. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to watch that. Montgomery tonight. Clift was in Jeez. that. Um, uh, Dean Martin. An no. interesting note about Dean Martin in that. Uh, I always carry this around with me. That was the first dramatic film he did after he breaking up with Jerry. Interesting, yeah. And he got a nomination for it. That's what happens sometimes when people stop doing the comedy. Like Jackie Gleason was nominated. Oh, man. Not for comedy. No time for sergeants, baby. No time for sergeants. Oh, yeah. And then, um, I mean, a lot of times... Comedians, if they played a serious role, they were more respected. Don Rickles, even mm-hmm. played in uh, what was it? What's that? Was it? It was a that war movie. I think Clint Eastwood might have directed it. Uh, James Brown was in it. Oh, what was that? One of the Kelly's Heroes. Kelly's Heroes. I, oh, I'm yeah. pretty sure that was Rickles. Dirty Dozen. Dirty Dozen. I, but those are those are like my kids yeah. are not going to watch those with me. It means nothing to them. Uh, my one of my all time favorites. I'm begging begging them to watch is Bridge Over the River Kwai. And that, that has Japanese. My kids are part Japanese. So I was like, "Come on, uh, watch, watch the stubbornness I deal with with your other part of your family because <laughs> they're very stubborn people." <laughs> I can't believe you said that. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you. In kids, the though. movie, in the movie, they were very stubborn. They put them in the cooler, put them in the cooler. The poor, and, it, yeah. and they were stubborn in return. The English were very stubborn. Yeah, Great Escape. Great. Oh, that's that's my go-to. My yeah. actually, my oldest son did like that one. That was a great one. And talk about a cast. Yeah. That's the thing with these films. And here's a difference too. In my thoughts or observations, this is I this is what I do like about English films mm-hmm. is people look real. In American movies now, they don't look as real. They don't have like really like you know the English yeah. actors. You would see, you see these little like independent films, and it's like people you, you could believe that's your grocery store, the the, the grocer, the local grocer, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. They're heavy set. They're ne- and now the the movies, but that's the thing about Great Escape. Those were like only Steve McQueen was like you know really good looking, you know, model type. Yeah. But everybody else is like a real character in a rugged sort of way. In a rugged Charles Bronson was rugged. Yeah, remember him in that movie? I mean, oh, just and I just. I just love that movie. And then Shawshank came out. That was the other prison movie that I liked. Yeah. Can I ever do my Morgan Freeman for you? No. No. Yeah, <laughs> let, me, let me hear it. You could probably do it, too. In 1966, I am the Dufresne. Left Shawshank Prison. 
All they found was a set of mud prison clothes, an old bar of soap, and a rock hammer and they worn down to the nub. And they're deframed. That means nothing to you. <laughs> you know, that's great to me. No, I mean, the scene, I'm t- does that sound well, like them? The voice, no, no. You, you have a little bit of a twang in there, but that, but you were pretty good. And that. <laughs> <laughs> you, that was pretty good. <laughs> a little bit of a twang. I see you're very, really analyzing this. I want to talk about, so 10 years old, what's your first thing that you ever did? And what I didn't do anything. Do I, I, like I said, I, I, I watched a lot of movies. You had to do something. Well, it, it came you didn't debut on the major league or whatever. Just the ten of us. I went in in junior high. Okay. Because I didn't do anything in, when I was ten. Yeah. But when I finally went to junior high. Okay. Um, because I had no idea how to go about becoming one. Nobody in my family was even interested in it. Right. You know, I used to watch movies, and, and then I fell in love with sci-fi. You know, and yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. But you you're know. not watching with a sibling. You're not going, this is great. Hey, we have our sci fi is oh, coming no. on this afternoon on UHF. No. You're watching by yourself with this fascinating, you're just fascinated. You're really, you're drawn into this yeah. whole arena that is not happening in San Mateo in your house with nine people. Yeah, I, I saw, you know, I saw uh, Opie. <laughs> what? <laughs> Opie from, uh, you know, with Andy, the, Griffith, Andy show? Griffith show. Ron Howard? Ron Howard. Ron Howard and I are the same age. Wait, wait a minute. You saw him and he was your inspiration? One little, of them. Little Opie? I looked at him and I saw a kid. Yeah. I didn't see a white kid. I didn't see a black kid. I saw a kid my age <laughs> uh, working on screen. I said, hey, I can do that. You know he was a music man, too? Yeah. He had a little lisp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he played it with a lisp. He's really adorable. I, we watched Music Man last year. I took my mom. Oh, no, he's fantastic. Uh, yeah. So, so oh, it's Ron, uh, have you met Ron Howard? I have met Ron Howard. And you talked to him. You were my inspiration? Uh, no, we never got that far no. in the conversation. Um, it's really interesting. Uh, that was before I was in the club. <laughs> 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 you know? Um, boy, that went fast. I know. Um so, so you you met him, but you you weren't you yet. Well, you were, you know, you I've always been this guy that I I'm not that that guy, you know. I'm not that person that's gonna go. Oh man, you're so great. Da, 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 da. Yeah. You know, even though I I loved Clint Eastwood back in the day, you know, uh, because he was tall. Interesting. You know, but what I, I look for a, things. What like, a great director, though. He took oh, his he took his fabulous. career. Fantastic. He is an um. um I worked with him. I'd say pro- really. What movie did you do with him? Oh my God. What? <laughs> I know I did my research, but maybe not quite. What? Which one? Which one was it? Oh God! Okay, right. now I'm. I'm blanking. Oh, I'm you're blanking. blanking on your own. Oh, I don't feel so bad now. He doesn't know his own movie. <laughs> uh, it, oh God! He was a thief, and uh, was in, um, he was a thief, and he, and he directed robbed, it. He robbed the, and, the, the donor to the president, and the president was in his in the, the guy's house, and uh, oh, I can't why well, can't that was that? a long time ago. Absolute Somebody, power, absolute power, absolute. He directed that. Yes. I heard he's a really great work director to work with. You know what? Very I, simple. I actually, actually, I adopted my directing style from him um, because he says action is not the kind of feeling you want when you want somebody to get he into a scene. He doesn't say action. I he heard. says, when you're ready. Wow. When you're ready. When you're ready. I, I just but became very ready just now. <laughs> just you say. <laughs> when you're ready. <laughs> when you're ready. <laughs> when you're ready. When you're ready, yeah. and then it just and it's rolling, and they get into rolling. it whenever they get very quiet. He, as opposed he to fired, he fired an AD because he yelled on the set. Wow, he really is cool. I've met, I've hung out with him, and my big observation of him is you said tall, mm. big head. Every it's, actor it's like, has a big head. I know. I I someone told me that, but he was the one where it was like what in the, like a pumpkin on a broomstick. It you ever see like, Tom Cruise up close? Yeah, I was. I played his brother in a movie. Okay, <laughs> Taps. Tom's got a huge head. Yes, he is a big. A lot, a lot of people. All of them. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm surprised I'm not more famous. I'm an eight. I, uh, your cap wouldn't even fit me. Yeah. You have to have a whole new cap on your well, DH cap wear over I'm here. Pretty, I'm pretty. Yeah, you know, about seven five eights. Yeah, I'm an eight, which is above any of them. It's, there's not even a category for this giant dome. So that which begs the question, man. What you what the fuck did you do wrong? <laughs> What have you been doing wrong? Come on, Craig. That's going to do it. His first podcast ever. How fast did that go? 
It was kind of fast. Yeah. Kind of, just uh, next time it'll be not kind of it real fast. You see, I heard you say that for the, you know, the prior person. So I said, you know, I was kind of putting at it on my mental clock. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it was, I, I had a great time. It, it, it went quick. Anyway, Dennis, thanks for being here. Dennis Haysbert, go visit him. Uh, it's dot .tv. I guess he couldn't Dennis get Dennis Haysbert, dot he .tv. Co he couldn't get the com, but he got the he got the TV. And that I'm available choice. at craigshoemaker.com and all the other stuff. And make sure you spread the word about us. It's called Still Standing Up, and it's a podcast for you.